I've spent this summer asking a lot of my, my good friends who are writers, like, how, how many hours a day do you write? Because I've always sat down, like, most of the day, whether it's, wh whether it's useful or not, I think that I have to stay in my writing room um, for, like, six, you know, six to eight hours. And then I was surprised to learn that many writers whom I admire um, only write for about three hours a day in a very concentrated burst. I've always, the one I always think about is Graham Greene, who wrote from 9 to 12 and then drank. That was his official, <laughs> that was his decision. He would drink from 12 to 5 and work from 9 to 12. And Better than the other way around. Five, right, 500 words a day ma mapped on a graph yeah. and then drink from midday onwards. And he wrote a lot of books, yeah. like there's more than 25 books. Yeah. I, I don't, I think when I was very young, I could write maybe... Sometimes you would write two and a half thousand words, right? It sounds, seems ridiculous to a journalist who does that on a daily basis. But I, since I've been a grown woman, I don't think I get ever beyond a thousand, and it's m mm -hmm. more likely to be five hundred. And it's never really more than three to four hours. Do I you, don't have any more than that now. Right. Even if I wanted to go further, I couldn't. Do you? If but you what have, you? if you have as, as much time as you want, do you have a word limit though, or do you? Do you just do it by? I, I think if you work beyond four hours, it, it goes bad. Mm -hmm. When I'm working well, I try to write eight hundred words. Yeah, um, and that feels a like a, that seems, a champion that day. That seems like, good. Yeah. You want people to congratulate you as you come out of your room instead right. of just roll their eyes and like right, where right. is dinner? Yeah. I, I think a lot of time for me was spent in anxiety or kind of nausea or fear or. And that's all been cut down. I'm in therapy just like you are. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's been helping you. It you wrote your help. last book it does quite help. easily because of therapy, right? Uh, this is what New York is doing to me. This is I know, me too. <laughs> but the, I'm only in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> the, fr the anxiety about a sentence, like getting so caught up, I, I think I was very uh, liable to do that. And a certain fluidity. And oh, this book is in the first person. You, and Jeff's read it. And he knows. And... I think my main block was with the first person, which therapy is a part of, but I also think it's a British and American difference. I was thinking about it recently, trying to write about the difference between the first and the third person. And in England, you are taught from a really early age that Shakespeare is the greatest writer who ever lived. And the second thing you learn about him is that he was the great artist of the impersonal. That he never said I. He says everything. Mm -hmm. He is everybody. He is no one in particular. He is this kind of negative capability. And it, I think it sinks into British writers quite deeply mm -hmm. as a literary value. The idea is you should... He writes plays, does he? Because we don't hear it. Yeah, some plays. Yeah, he wrote some plays <laughs> 400 years ago. Um, and I think we confuse ethics and aesthetics very yeah. easily, right, yeah. in Britain. We think there's something moral and, and grand and empathetic about writing in the third person. I think I was very much under that delusion that somehow if you write in the third person you're less uh, self-preoccupied less mm -hmm. egotistical it's all nonsense mm -hmm. so you felt like you're cheating if, if you wrote in the first person in a sense i think or i was always lecturing my students i realize yeah. now you know they'd write in the first person mm -hmm. and i just say things like well fiction is about other people and about otherness and yeah and i didn't really understand the power that the first person has mm -hmm. shonda rhymes said um I, I do whatever I want. I write about whatever I want, and the only thing I worry about is you have to get it right. Right. And and she said, but of course, whatever I'm writing, you know, if I'm writing about a white person, it's a black woman writing about a white person. It's a it's a, a black woman writing about a, you know whatever character she's she's dealing with. You know, I th every writer I know, um, I don't know about everyone, but we got into this because we wanted to write from other points right. of view than our, than our own. So everyone is resisting this idea that we can't try to, to break the bonds of our little egos. As I was as a child, uh, very curious about other people's faiths, other people's lives. Um, and under the sign of love and interest, I wanted to bury in, when I wrote The Autograph Man, I was very, very interested in Jewish life. I'd been surrounded by it in the area in which I lived, and I wanted to know. I was curious. I wanted to be in there. So the risk, obviously, is error. And I make so many errors. And on beauty, there's all this bad American prose. Um, in White Teeth, I'm sure there's many mistakes about Bengali life. So the risk is, is ridicule. There's ridicule. Mm -hmm. I've written ridiculous things. But, but it's under the price of interest. I was interested. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do it. So I don't mind 
getting things wrong. Mm -hmm. I had that feeling that I could write about about anywhere. And when right. I started writing Middlesex, and I was writing the historical portions in 19, you know, 1922 in Asia Minor, um, I didn't do any any research at all into it. I just thought I was actually at, I was at Yaddo. I was at Yaddo, <laughs> and um, you know, I had they were giving me food, and I had a room, yeah, so I, I thought I can write about um, Asia Minor. <laughs> And I just plunged into it, and I wrote the most terrible like fairy fairy tale right. village life of Greeks. I knew nothing about them, and <laughs> it was I knew it was not going well, but I still thought it was my failure of imagination. I should right. you know that's what the problem was. And then I came out of um, my room one day, and there was a book sitting on the on the table, and the title was Smyrna 1922. Someone <laughs> someone had left it there. Um, oh. It was like a hist hist history of and I thought maybe that would help if, yeah, I, right. you know, if I if I read something about what I was writing about. So I did realize that sometimes you have to. Do it does some, help. I used to have so little respect for experience as a, yeah. a subject. You you definitely can write about anywhere, but those pages any reader will see the flatness. Yeah. There is no perfect ethical status identity that you exist in. That mm -hmm. doesn't exist. It would be wonderful if it were true, but there is no such place where you stand superior and have this easy move between cultures. Yeah. I only have a curiosity, an interest, a love, and, and that, that's it, really. Mm -hmm.